Hi viewers and today we're looking at fillets and rounding off corners of shapes. This may seem a simple thing that I'm showing you but there is some interesting things with the actual tool we're using and some interesting terminology. I've had quite a few people come to me and say how do you round off corners or I'm having trouble right, rounding off corners and getting the right, right, um, the right arc for the actual rounding off. Now, for starts, let's get the terminology right, um, because a lot of people are starting to search for this and they can't find a result on Google or, or in certain forums. So I was told at a very early date when I did technical drawing um, at school is that when you want to round off a corner, do not call it rounding off because people get the wrong idea. You either call it a fillet or a chamfer. Now, a fillet is when you actually round this corner off here. So we can do that with the fillet tool. So that's rounded off there. Or if I wanted to round this off a bit more, there we go, it's so the fillet tool there. Now a chamfer, if I just do a fillet in there, is different. Now chamfer is a basically straightening off, straightening off of an edge, like so. Let's just lean that up, that up a bit. So that's just taking that edge off. So that's chamfered the edge, and that's just literally taking a straight line between two points and getting rid of that corner there. Now there is a trick with the fillet tool that I'll show you and you can see there's a number of different shapes here that I've created using polygon, the rectangle tool and using the fillet between them and I'm going to show you some tricks around that area. Let's get rid of those. So I'm going to start with a normal rectangle or square and I am going to zoom in in control shift plus I'm in the sketch workbench so it's all to do with sketches um, so I am going to flip to this edge now there's two ways to, ways to doing this let's hit escape so I can get my normal points back using the create a fillet between two lines or a point let's click on the fillet tool now if I select this point here you'll notice that we've created a fillet in there but we've only created a one size fillet. So if I do it on this side, you'll see this size is the same and that's in relation to the actual size of the object. So undo those. Now, if I select my fillet tool again and I pick the side, wherever I click on that side, click on the other one, it will create a fillet. So if I do it again, I've slid down here, we we'll get more of a curve. So depending on how large our fillet we want, we can actually select at different points along this curve. So go right to there, so you can see our fillet is getting more and more as we select. So let's go closer here. There we go. And also we can do the other side, like so. If I wanted to change the shape of these fillets, I can actually drag a side and you'll notice that it will be changing shape, but we've got a problem with sides moving and everything. And that's where our constraints come in. Because if I move this one, you can see if, the more I move to this corner, the more of a fillet we get on this side. But if we start constraining a point to actually stop one of these points moving, so let's constrain this side here, oh, sorry, this point here, to the point of origin. And I'm gonna put a vertical and a horizontal point. So what I've done is actually fully constrained that point there. I can actually work 
on this side to actually decide what my fillet should look like. So I can actually bring this in and out to what I desire. And obviously if we start constraining other points we can actually have more of an effect on that. So constraining points will help you with actually creating our nice fillet there or what we actually want. And this comes in handy when we're actually tracing a part. So if I jump into my image workbench and I'm going to load a, I'm oh, still in my sketch, still got a sketch open, let's close that. So if I jump into my image workbench and I want to create a planner image in 3D space and I'm going to select my planner image. Let's go for that one. Let's go on the XY plane. And that's, this is the, uh, the image I want to create and you can see it's got quite a few curves on there. And I'm going to start sketching with my poly. I'm on the polyline tool. And I'm just going to straighten off these edges. And what I'm looking at is the depth of the curve. Don't have to worry about being neat because we're going to put some constraints in here. Okay, so that'll do for the time being. I'm going to hit the escape so we get a point back, and I'm just going to put a vertical constraint and some horizontal constraints in here. I can do that by clicking both those and just stick one in there as well. Now, do some minor adjustments just to bring those in. Be careful of shadowing here because it gives me a false idea of where the line, the actual line is. So now I've got these in place, I can actually start filleting these edges. So click the fillet tool and I'm going to look at where these, the actual curve starts and ends. So we start around about there and there and same on this side up there and it dips to here and I can go here and here and here I've lost my tool and fit there and about there so you can see that's filleted nicely there um, when I start adjusting these obviously you're going to have to be careful because it's an unconstrained sketch so we're going to get issues here so the best idea I find is that if you're looking at say a hollow like this is to actually have a look and see how curved this uh, hollow is so I can see the actual curve on the left and right side of this hollow are basically the same so I can actually take these two points and I want those in line with each other so if I hit the vertical constraint there I can actually put those in line I can just, just readjust those to bring them back in And I can use my constraints to actually anchor parts of this uh, this object to to the actual centre of origin. So I can do some finer adjustments. Say I want to anchor this side here. So that means that point there will never move. So I can actually work on this side then. Rather than working on this side, if 
wanted to change something over old anchor point over here so I can actually get this to exactly how I want. So that point is, I know, is in the true part, and that's good. If I start moving this, you can see all the other part of the sketch starts to move. So in that case, I will start to anchor parts of this sketch to the center. But that's how you would fill it, these sides. So I hope that helped. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. If you like what you see, and please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.